All right, hi there. So this is a review of the Anet A2 3D printer. So I'm just going to go over, you know, what it was like to build it. Uh, first off, so once I got it, obviously this is a kit. Um, everything is in little bags in the box. You know, you have to assemble absolutely everything. The most irritating part is to pull the labels off the acrylic parts. That is why I would never buy an acrylic framed 3D printer because it would drive me insane. Uh, so first off uh, I unpacked it and obviously there's no uh, instruction manual in the box. The instruction manual is on a SD card which comes with the kit. Um, on the SD card there is a PDF file on there and that um, shows you how to build the 3D printer and I didn't have any problem understanding how it went together to be honest and I was able to complete the 3D printer just with that PDF. Uh, there is links on that SD card to um, videos on YouTube which show you how to build this machine so you know if that's your thing. Uh, but I generally find uh, pausing, rewinding, replaying videos uh, it takes a lot longer so in total I didn't it took me around um, six hours to put together but I was videoing the process as well but the thing is to take your time with the kit you know don't rush it that's the main thing I am quite an impatient person but uh, when I'm building anything I always take my time to make sure that I assemble everything correctly and also you want to get the uh, frame of the print as square as possible because if not you're just going to have uh, big problems uh, 3D printing with it and uh, that is one thing that you definitely need is a square because to get the um, x-axis or z-axis because this does move up and down as well it's the z-axis as well and the x-axis runs on it so you need to actually get this bar here completely square if possible. I mean, a tiny amount out, probably not gonna hurt, but you really need to get that. So that is uh, that is square to that. Because if not, you're just gonna have major problems with uh, 3D printing. Uh, that's where a lot of people in these kits get stuck. They're never able to actually uh, get that square. It's not actually that hard. It took me probably about half an hour to get it right. And that's mainly because of uh, a couple of design flaws in the way that it's actually put together. But it's not impossible. And I had the same, um, I had exactly the same problems with uh, the TiVo uh, tarantula over there. So, you know, that's just one of those things with these type of kits. It is a bit of a pain to get them uh, square. And also the other problem which I had with this kit out of the box, uh, when I come to power it on and heat the heat bed up and the extruder for the first time, I found that the power supply unit was duff and it didn't work. It did work, but as soon as you put draw, um, try to draw any current from it, it would just, the um, 3D printer would shut down and it turns out it was actually the power supply unit. I contacted the seller and the seller was um, was okay and he uh, refunded me £12 which with that £12 I was able to go and actually purchase a power supply unit from another vendor and in that time I didn't have to wait because I already had a power supply unit which was working uh, off my other 3D printer so I got it set up and it ran absolutely fine. Um, the first print that I printed off on it uh, was this here. And this was the first print. Well, it was either this or this here, actually. Sorry. Uh, this chess piece. And it, actually, it came out really well. It was one out of these two anyway. I can't remember exactly. But it came out quite well. Uh, as you can see from that, the right in there is back to front and that was because uh, the stepper motor uh, was back to front, it was wired back to front so I just had to switch uh, 
two of the wires round and to reverse the uh, stepper motor and then no problems um, so yeah that's about the only problems that I had with it mainly was just the power supply unit and the stepper motor was reversed uh, was there anything else? No there wasn't um, and it printed um, it printed well from you know the first prints really and I mean this is all this well it's not all the stuff that I've printed I've actually printed a lot more than this I've uh, give a lot of it away but uh, as you can see from the quality uh, Star Wars hand solo blaster um, the quality is actually uh, pretty good this is going to be a Christmas present for someone And then this here, this is actually a part from my uh, Chinese CNC machine. This is so I can fit a uh, one of these Makita palm routers uh, onto my CNC machine. Now this is a direct replacement for this part here. Now I did have a little problem with it, with a slight warpage on that corner there. You can probably see it, but uh, this is still actually usable. But, I mean, as you can see there, it's quite a good quality finish on that. Now, I think this was at zero, yeah, it was. It was 0 02 millimeter layer height. Yeah, I mean, then there's just uh, like these rockets here. These aren't actually failed prints, so I'm actually going to... I've been making these to put plants in. And this one's a vase. And also, I've been printing off parts for the TiVo Tarantula. These are just some corner brackets which I'm going to put on here. I also printed this LCD display housing, which come out nice. And also these Christmas trees here. And some Christmas tree decorations. And I did print a lot more stuff, but uh, I've given most of it away. So, but as you can see, the quality from it is pretty good. So the upgrades that I've made to it, um, they don't really need to be upgraded as such. I mean, the only thing what you don't get with it, the 3D printer, when you purchase it, is a part calling fan, a um, funnel or whatever you want to call it to channel the air down to where the plastic's being extruded to cool the plastic off. Now it's not a big problem, it depends what you're printing, but if you're printing anything with like overhangs then you're going to get sagging because you can't cool the um, hot filament down fast enough. So that is really the only thing that you really need to print. You can get away with it, you know, get away with everything else. Uh, the other thing that you really I mean I need to do as well is to put a um, fan to cool the actual main board down. It's not quite so much of a bigger you know big of a deal now because I've um, actually put this external MOSFET on here to take most of the uh, strain away from the main board so it doesn't really get uh, warm now so the main board is only heating the uh, hot end. Um, the other bits that I made, which is, you know, it's just to make it easier, is this uh, uh, Y axis um, belt tensioner and then the X axis belt tensioner up there. That's just to make it easier to uh, tighten the belts because it is quite difficult to tighten the belts and it just makes it, you know, a simpler operation when it needs to be done. <coughs> I'll put links in the description to all the parts that I've printed off for it. The other thing that I have done, I didn't, it didn't need doing, um, but here's the uh, hot end here, and I actually removed this. I uh, the reason I've done it is because I wanted to fit. I don't know if you can see that there's an E3D volcano hot end on now. I haven't actually changed the uh, heat sink at the top there, the cold end. It's all the same, it's got the same throat with the PTFE liner in there. And I've just uh, whacked the uh, E3D Volcano hot end on there. 
and this is mainly because I'm pretty impatient in, in uh, waiting for the long prints so this has got a 0.8mm nozzle on there so I can you know I mean it will cut prints in half but obviously you're not going to get as fine quality as you would from a 0.4mm nozzle uh, the other thing that I upgraded um, was I put a glass uh, bed on here as well as a PE, um, PEI sheet on top of it uh, glass bed to make it so the bed is completely flat and then the PEI sheet just to uh, be able to stick the prints to a lot easier and not have to worry about um, putting painters tape on all the time so just a quick word about safety with this machine so this machine comes with one of these power supply units here with uh, open connections basically it does just have that little uh, plastic flap over there but a child could easily get their fingers in there and get an electric shock as you can see there you've got the uh, neutral live and earth uh, just sitting there open and uh, so I would definitely consider printing a box off for this to fit over those connections to reduce the chances of anybody getting an electric shock including yourself and that is one of my uh, next things that I am going to print off for this uh, so I wouldn't re recommend this uh, you know if you're going to be building this with a uh, child uh, and letting them build it because it could be potentially fatal if they don't know what they're doing and also if uh, you're buying this as a first printer and you're not you know too sure about electronics but you thought you'd give it a go anyway uh, just make sure that you're you know safety conscious and uh, yeah just be careful but yeah I think that's about it really um, if anybody's got any questions they want to ask about the uh, ANET A2 uh, please do so in the comment section down below and I will try to answer them um, as best as I can but overall uh, for the money that I paid for it I'm uh, pretty happy with it I've got to say I think it was uh, worth every penny I okay, paid so please consider commenting down below and giving this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing and hitting that um, bell icon so you'll get a notification the next time I uh, upload a video and I just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time bye